holy geez, you guys, did Mike Herrera just tell Chris Leto that the UFO control group kidnaps people from third world countries to turn them into psychic soldiers? Well, that is sure what it sounds like, guys. So let's talk about it. Get in here. This is Jack with Cosmic Road. I talk about UFOs and the paranormal. Please hit like, please subscribe, please share on social media, and let me know what you think in the comments below. Of course, many of you will have seen the uh, excellent uh, Stephen Greer panel uh, where he had a range of UFO witnesses and whistleblowers testify uh, not long ago. You may remember him from this uh, famous uh, uh, image that was made to illustrate his experience in Indonesia, where he was able to see uh, goons of the UFO control group um, actually loading what he believes were people aboard this UFO. They were stored in storage containers meant to keep them alive and being uh, shipped aboard this UFO. Obviously, they were not willing participants. They had been uh, kidnapped. And at first, uh, we and I think Mike were under the impression this was some sort of human trafficking situation where the UFO control group was using human trafficking in part to fund itself. Now, that would kind of dovetail a little bit with some of the information from Lance Corporal Weigand, where he uh, saw the UFO crash in Peru in the 90s and was um, you know, arrested by the Department of Defense agents. Uh, yeah, the goons of the control group, the Department of, uh, excuse me, the Department of Energy, and uh, taken to the local hub of operations of the UFO control group in Peru. Where, and he said he got the impression that they funded themselves in part through the black market. So that would seem to further corroborate that, right? The Michael Herrera information. But now he has learned some additional information. Pardon me, guys. I'm battling a cold right now. At first, I thought it was just allergies. But no, it's a, it's a full-blown cold. No fever, though. I'm fine. Uh, but my nose, may, my, my voice is probably a little nasally right now. But uh, yeah, moving on. We don't know, or at least I have not been able to vet the source of my career's information. So it's hard to say with 100% accuracy if this information is true, but it does kind of make sense. So what exactly is this information? Well, Mike says that he has learned that certain people are... Uh, have a tendency toward psychic abilities, you know, maybe remote viewing uh, type of abilities. And this seems to line up with what Gary Nolan has said about part of the brain, uh, the part of the brain and experiencers being different. Uh, there's a certain part that I can never pronounce that's denser in experiencers. And Gary Nolan believed this may have given them uh, extra abilities that, you know, he called it perception, but we might also think of it in terms of uh, the third eye or psychic abilities, something like that. So um, is that what's going on? He says that uh, the control group, uh, yeah, I don't think he uses the words the control group, but that's what he's talking about, is able to keep track of people uh, throughout the world and uh, being able to see if they had the genetic markers for this predisposition. And they especially target third world countries. And then they will go and they will, in his own words, scoop them up. And they will transport them aboard these UFOs. They will kidnap them and transport them aboard these UFOs, presumably back to their, their base of operations, wherever that is. And, uh, you know, they will be inducted into the program forcibly, but they will be well taken care of, according to Mike, and their families will be provided for. And that's why they target these third world countries, it seems, uh, is because it, it will make an even bigger impact in their lives. Uh, they will be provided for financially and their families will be uh, also provided for. So a real inducement to be loyal to the program, uh, et cetera, would be, would be my guess. He doesn't go into a lot of details. Now, this is just part one of the interview with Chris, and there is going to be a part two. Hopefully, we will get further information, and, and I can't wait for that. Uh, Chris is doing a great job. I, I love his channel, and Mike uh, gives a lot more information in this interview. I highly recommend you to check out the full interview, and I will link to it below. Um, but yeah, this is gangbusters information uh, that the control group might be kidnapping people to use their abilities. And Mike says they are using these abilities to interface with the ET technology because these UFOs 
as many experiencers have reported, uh, they are they operate through one the pilot's consciousness. A lot of these UFOs seem to have a consciousness in and of themselves, which is crazy. But um, they also are able to interact with the consciousness of the pilot and the pilot can control the UFO. So does that mean these UFOs are gifted technology from the beings? Are they reverse engineered? If so, why weren't they reverse engineered to allow humans to pilot them without this extra step? Uh, so it seems more likely that this is gifted technology. Mike also says that a huge part of this uh, a, a, a massive part of it. In fact, he says the biggest part of this is underground. Uh, he doesn't go into any details. He says he can't talk about it, but he seems to clearly be hinting at the dumbs, at the deep underground military bases. And he says that is key, that is huge, that is the biggest part of this whole thing. And, you know, the, the dumbs are, that's an entirely separate video. But yeah, it, it seems like dumbs are a thing, according to my best information. And it is also the thing that seems to lead to the most suicides uh, for researchers. So it is a heavily, heavily guarded secret. Um, remote viewers have actually been successful in remote viewing some of these dumbs. And according to their information, they are vast, vast complexes. Uh, deep, deep underground with many layers. And according to one of those reports, uh, the layers were structured so that uh, they had different atmospheric environments and different environments in each layer, allowing different types of being to live in these deep underground military bases. Yeah, that's right. Non-humans are, are apparently living there and working alongside humans in those bases, according to that information. You know, obviously hard to confirm and people that do try to investigate this stuff, sometimes stuff happens to them. Ooh, this cold is kicking my butt, guys. I'm telling you, yikes. Uh, I'm getting my flu shot. I'm telling you that this coming week because I do not like being sick. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, moving on back to Mike. He has this amazing bombshell information about how the UFO control group works. So does this mean that they don't use the black market to in part fund themselves as Lance Corporal Weigand was uh, uh, led to believe or, or that was his own uh, summation uh, based on his experiences? Um, you know, it's an interesting, you know, we need to know how this works, right? They're not going to tell us uh, we might get, you know, some information coming out, but it's unlikely we're going to learn this deep stuff because they're not going to want to admit this. Um, the UFO control group assist in abductions. Uh, they kidnap people. They assassinate people. How can they admit that? Now, maybe if we grant amnesty to these guys, we can provide an inducement for them to come forward. I don't know. It's hard to continents providing amnesty to people who have done these shady things. Uh, but it may be the only way to drag this into the light. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts on that below. We know from the David Grush information that the UFO control group funds itself in large part by redirecting congressional funds. Uh, you know, money goes to the, the black op stuff and then there's a sub sub op of, you know, sub program from one program and et cetera. And it gets a uh, trickle down to the, uh, the UFO control group. And that seems to be in large part how they fund themselves. Do they have additional sources of funding through the black market? Um, you know, again, we, we just don't know. Uh, we don't have uh, very many cases of this. Really, the, the best example we have is the Lance Corporal Weigand case, and he couldn't give us any actual uh, information on it. He, he didn't want to go there, and in the second interview with him, he really didn't want to go there, and he gave us even fewer details about that. So we don't really know if that's a thing or not. Uh, you know, the corroborating information was from Michael Herrera in his first, uh, you know, when he first introduced us to this information. But since then, it seems like he has changed the story and uh, he, he has been exposed to different information that has changed his opinion about what he saw. So do they fund themselves through the black market or is it all through congressional funds or, or maybe they have their own businesses and stuff, uh, you know, stuff like that, that they raise money through? Uh, we just don't know, but 
if they are, you know, kidnapping people for these programs, um, that's a very different from what we might have thought before. Does this change my opinion about the UFO control group? Does it make them less shady uh, to basically enslave these people than it does to than it would would otherwise be if they had been doing something, uh, you know, potentially even shadier? Uh, I'm not going to go into that right now. Uh, I, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments below. So how are they keeping track of these people worldwide? How are they keeping track of people that might have these genetic markers for this psionic ability, as Mike uh, Herrera calls it? Uh, is this through DNA testing? Do we need to be very cautious about having our DNA tested? Is that what we're talking about? Um, I don't know. He didn't provide any information about that. Um, hopefully he'll provide more information in part two. Obviously this is hugely important um, and we need to know if we need to avoid having our DNA tested. Unfortunately, I've already had mine tested. So, uh, you know, I went to Ancestry and, and, and did my whole genealogy and everything. So, uh, you know, I don't know about you guys, but I have not been, uh, you know, uh, abducted by the UFO control group that I know about. So I don't think that I have that genetic marker, fortunately or not. I mean, I'd like to have psychic abilities. That'd be pretty cool. Now, I do think that we can all learn psychic abilities. Uh, apparently, anybody can learn remote viewing. And I even, I had my own psychic experience uh, or mind-to-mind -mind experience during a Reiki class uh, where we were, um, we, we, we had a partner and we sat down, we put our four heads together and we each tried to project an image into each other's mind and we took turns doing this she wasn't able to see what i was sending although somebody else in the room was which is interesting um but i was able to see uh what looked like a a pitted sphere a pale pitted sphere and I thought, well, you know, that's got to be a cantaloupe, right? It's got to be like a melon. So that's what I told her, you know, and she said, no, it was the moon. So, you know, that's what in remote viewing they call, uh, you know, you're not supposed to interpret what you see. You're just supposed to describe exactly, precisely what you see, uh, because if you... Uh, inject your own analytic overlay uh, onto what you are seeing, you are going to get it wrong. So that was my uh, one and only example of that. I was able to see what she was projecting, but I interpreted it wrongly um, through that analytic overlay. But yeah, if even I can do this stuff and anybody can do it, um, so uh, I don't, you know, but I guess people that have these genetic markers can do it even better. I don't know, guys. Anyway, fantastic information for Michael Herrera. Hats off to Chris Lato for the interview. Uh, again, check out the full interview below. I can't wait for part two. I also really want to see some corroboration on this information. Uh, but it certainly fits a pattern of shady uh, doings of the control group and of people who have these abilities and how, you know, I can see how they could be valuable to the control group. So, um, and they could be using them in other ways too, other than simply piloting these craft. But that's just all speculation and we need more information and more corroboration on this stuff. Obviously hard to get uh, to pry open this information from the, the jaws of the control group. But um, whistleblowers are coming out and more information will definitely be leaking out. So I will be keeping my eyes on that. And if you see it before I do, let me know. Uh, so yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a big thumbs up. I'd sure appreciate it. Smash the subscribe button and the bell to be notified of future videos. You don't want to miss a thing. Join me on social media. There's Facebook and Twitter links below. I'd love to see you guys there. If you wanted to support Cosmic Road in an even bigger way, please consider grabbing a coffee mug or a t-shirt. See the merch store below. Or you can become a channel member because channel members are rock stars. Now, we really appreciate you guys' support. Meanwhile, there are plenty of other videos on the channel, and I'll see you guys next time. This is Jack with Cosmic Road, signing out. Now on to get some chicken noodle soup. <laughs>